I like to bike. Sometimes it gets dark when I bike, so I decided I need a tail light. All right, what you'll need is an SPST switch and a PNP transistor. You'll also need some 200 ohm resistors. You're also gonna need eight LEDs. I got a pack of 30 of them on Amazon for about $4, so you shouldn't have a problem finding them. You'll need a couple 470 ohm resistors. You'll also need a potentiometer, which is at least 50 kilo ohms, and this can be uh, just a little trimming potentiometer like this one. You also need a couple jumpers. You also need a small capacitor, somewhere around 100 microfarads. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly 100 microfarads because we have that trimming potentiometer. Uh, just try and find something around there. If you can't find that, then you can alter your resistor values. You also need a 9 volt battery and some alligator clips might be useful. You're also going to need a um, 9 volt battery connector. I found mine just lying around. You can find them at Radio Shack or Amazon or something. You're also going to need 247 ohm resistors. Optional is one of these dip sockets uh, to protect the 555 timer. You'll also need a small-ish piece of perf board. Last but not least, you'll need your 555 timer. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is take your two jumper cables, plug one into the positive rail of your breadboard, one into the negative rail, and then you're going to need to take two jumpers, connect one to the positive lead of this, I mean the positive rail of uh, this side and the positive rail of this side because we're going to be using both sides of the breadboard. We need to connect the two um, power rails. Now make sure that <coughs> the red is plugged into the red and the blue is plugged into the blue. Next, we're going to take our 555 timer, pop it into the breadboard, make sure that um, the little dot at the top is right here because this is pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5, pin 6, pin 7, and pin 8. Uh, and this little dot um, just indicates that this is pin 1. Next, we're going to take a, another jumper, connect it to pin 2, and then connect the other side to pin 6, so like this. And then what we're going to do is Take one of our 470 ohm resistors, connect it also to pin 2, but this one needs to go to pin 7, so right like, like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our potentiometer, see how there's three leads, we're going to use uh, the middle and one of the side leads. Okay, so we're going to pop that into the breadboard, and then I'm going to plug this into one of the side leads, and then plug it into... Uh, pin 7 of the 555 timer so it, it should everything should look kind of like that and then we're gonna take our other 470 ohm resistor plug it right into the middle lead of your uh, trimming potentiometer and then you're gonna plug it into positive right here okay so everything's like that and then what we're gonna do is we are going to take another jumper and plug it into pin 8 and then into the positive right here so from pin 8 into the positive rail and then we're going to take another jumper and connect it from pin 4 to the positive rail so like that and then we're going to take another jumper connect it from pin 1 into the negative rail and then we're going to take a resistor or a 200 ohm resistor for our LED and then we're going to take it and plug it into pin 3 of the 555 timer. And then we're going to take our LED and we're going to take the negative lead and plug it into the resistor uh, or pin 3 of the 555 timer and take the positive lead and plug it into the positive rail. And then we're going to take our capacitor and then we're going to plug the positive into pin 2 and the negative into pin I mean into the negative rail. Straighten out those leads a little bit. And then last but not least is the battery. We're gonna uh, plug that in like that. And we have something which resembles a bike light. And it's adjustable with this trimming potentiometer. Adjust the speed. All right, I can't explain exactly how this all works right now, but I'll give you guys a little bit of overview. 
Um, okay. When the capacitor is all the way charged, then the LED will turn on. And then once the LED turns on, the capacitor starts discharging through a set of resistors. Alright, this is the resistor which um, the capacitor gets discharged through. And once the capacitor is discharged, the LED will turn back off. So this LED controls the length of time that the LED is actually on. And since this is a small or a relatively small value of 470 ohms, the LED only turns on for a little bit. Um, so if we increase the resistance, then, the LED, then this capacitor would take longer to discharge and the LED would be on for a longer amount of time. What this resistor and this potentiometer do is, since they're linked in series, um, we can just call them one resistor. So what this resistor does is it charges the capacitor. So one th and it also uses this this uh, resistor to do so. So um, in increasing the resistance of this makes it take longer for the capacitor to charge, which makes it take longer for the LED to turn back on once it's turned off. Um, because once it's turned off, the capacitor stops discharging and allows it and allows charge into it. So you can fool around with it uh, according to that if you want to. I'm going to scale this circuit up a lot with a bunch more LEDs. So that's the reason I asked you guys to have a transistor. This is a PNP transi transistor, which is what you will need. You can get these at Radio Shack. You don't need a very high power one for this kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to plug it into our breadboard just like that. This is the emitter. And then this is this pin is the collector. The pin to the right is the collector. And then the middle one is the base. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take out our LED right there. We're going to leave this resistor here. We're going to plug the base pin into the resistor. And the reason we're leaving this resistor here is just for safety reasons. Uh, we don't want to accidentally draw too much current uh, with the transistor and damage our timer. Okay, um, next we are going to connect the um, collector to the positive rail. We're going to take our emitter and connect it to somewhere over here where we are going to line up all of our LEDs. Okay, here's how we're going to have our LEDs arranged. We're going to have two in series and then sets of those two all in parallel parallel with a 47 ohm resistor. Uh, this value isn't really calculated, it's just approximate. So if you're trying to do calculations and wondering why I'm using 47 ohms, it's just, I'm, this is my best guess. Here's how we're going to do it, and so we're going to put it all on the breadboard and see how it works. Okay, the way I'm going to arrange the LEDs on the breadboard might seem a little bit weird, but if you think about it, it's exactly the same as that schematic. So I'm going to insert one. This is one's the positive lead, so I'm going to connect the negative lead to the positive lead. See how they're offset like that? They're offset right there. Connect another one right here, same place as the first one. So every other LED is staggered. And then we're gonna connect another one, and we're gonna go all the way down. Okay, after we get our LEDs staggered like this, we're gonna take our two 47 ohm resistors, and we're gonna connect them to one of these LEDs. Make sure that you have the polarity on the LEDs right. So this is just one, and then to, to cut in half the resistance, we're gonna add another one. So it'll be about 25 ohms of resistance right now, which will give about 200 milliamps of current through these LEDs, which is a little bit much for these, but it's okay because they're on, as you can see they're on for such a short time at once and there's a long resting period in between so it's okay if you overpower LEDs a little bit like that don't quote me on that though they're pretty bright and now let's figure out how to get them all soldered to a piece of perf board all right here's how I'm gonna arrange the LEDs on here as you can see I'm using the tracks here's the positive lead of an LED right here and that's connected to the negative lead of another LED and they're sharing this same track right here so these will be in series and I'm gonna fold this positive lead down this way so it's on this track right here and then this track is gonna gonna be the negative track and I'm gonna arrange four series like this um, all the way down here so that the series are uh, in parallel Okay, so I did that with um, the rest of the LEDs, and I'm going to try and fit the rest of the circuitry on here. Alright, so I got uh, all the LEDs on there with the resistors, and I think the resistors are going to be connected to the positive rail right here via this track. Hey guys, I got everything soldered to the perf board. Let me turn it on for you guys and show you it working. And on this little battery pack, there's a convenient on-off switch. Turn it on, start blinking. And then we can also control the speed, just like before. 
One thing I recommend is uh, hot gluing the um, wires from your 9 volt battery onto the perf board so they don't break off. Another thing that I recommend you do is wrap the whole thing in electrical tape or duct tape or masking tape or something um, or scotch tape just to protect it if you are going to be using this. Uh, you don't want water to get all over it and uh, possibly destroy it. Also if you use the little socket here um, the timer isn't in there super well. It doesn't, uh, it falls out a little bit. Um, so taping in that, taping it in more securely also helps. Alright guys, thanks for watching. That looks like it for this video. Um, if you have questions, comment, subscribe, like this video. Uh, see you next time.